Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me. My name's Jo Mithen, and I'm the CEO of Monash College. And I'm really pleased to, that you've been able to join us today for a demonstration of the Monash College virtual classroom. We set up the virtual classroom because we don't want COVID-19 to slow down your ability to access Monash University at a time that suits you. We want to be able to continue to provide a guaranteed pathway to Monash University, even though the world at the moment is uh, operating in a slightly strange way and we can't welcome you here physically yet. The pathway to Monash University and the guarantee that Monash College provides is absolutely critical to us. And um, we've managed to convert all of our learning to a virtual classroom in order for, to facilitate this for you. The quality education, of course, continues to be our priority. And everything that we've done with the virtual classroom in an online environment is exactly the same approach as we've taken with our face-to-face -face classes normally. We're using the same teachers, the same curriculum, and the same support. In fact, we've actually strengthened our support model so that students receive tailored and individual assistance from their teachers, and they can help them then with very specific concerns. We've also got learning advisors, student counsellors, and student engagement specialists, all dedicated to supporting and encouraging our students. In today's session, Harry Flores, is going from a Diploma of Business teacher, will be taking you through an introduction to management. And you'll also be hearing from one of our current students about their experience in working on and presenting group assignments. We'll also talk to you about the support services available to students to make sure you have the best possible experience through the college. Our team has one goal in mind, and as CEO, I can assure you that we are all working towards the same outcome. And that is to give you a fantastic learning experience that will set you up for your journey to Monash University. So I'm going to hand over to Harry now, and I look forward to um, welcoming you to Australia, to Melbourne, to Monash, be it the university or the college, as soon as we're able to, but in the interim, to our virtual classroom world. Harry, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Welcome, everyone. My name is Harry Flores, and I'm glad to have you join us today. Uh, I'm going to, as Joe said, I'm going to go through a sample class with you. Uh, I'll take you through a virtual classroom taster just a little taste of some of the things that we do at Monash College uh, to be able to teach you in this virtual environment. And I'll show you how that we use Zoom to actually teach our students as we go along. So, as an example, uh, today, I'm going to just pick a quick little topic. Let's say introduction to management. And at this point, all we're going to do is run through just a couple of the uh, little samples of how we might present that to students and how we might actually engage with students and help students support them to be able to understand the topic and to be able to apply it to their real life learning. So the topic that I've picked today is what we call the four functions of management. Now, don't worry too much about the theory today, guys. Okay, this is just to give you a little bit of an example. But what we're looking at here is what a manager does. So we can see that a manager does four main things in general, planning, organizing, leading, of course, and controlling, okay? And really our aim for this class, for example, might be just to find out, broadly speaking, what the difference is between those four functions. So as an example, if we start off with planning, we can see straight away, uh, without even having said a word, that the main 
uh, idea that we're looking at here is some kind of target, okay? Or perhaps some kind of goal. So let's have a look at what planning is in terms of management. We all are aware of this. We all plan in our lives and it's pretty much the same. <laughs> So it's pretty much the same as what we do in our life. So we are creating goals for the organization. So we mean something that we are aiming for, a target, an objective, something that we want to achieve that's going to help us. And in order to create these goals, we have to come up with strategies to help the organization achieve these goals. Ways that we are going to do this. For example, if we want to be the number one business in our country, then obviously we have to have some kind of plan or strategy for how we're going to get there. What are we going to do? Are we going to have stores open everywhere? Are we going to have a few stores, but make sure that we are number one? Are we going to have heaps of advertising? How exactly are we going to get there? Now in the classroom, I would obviously go through this a lot more with students, uh, but for today, we're just going to have a little bit of a, a taste just to see how we might present that. I should also mention as well, every teacher is different and that's a really good thing because every teacher has their own style, um, has their own skills that they bring into the classroom. Uh, one of the things that I do like to do at the beginning of every class, especially as we're moving towards exams, is have five or 10 minutes of questions or students telling me how they're feeling. Harry, I, I really struggled with the homework. Oh, I'm nervous about the exam. Can we go over this again? So normally I'd actually start with that. But for today, let's move on to our next function. And we call this organizing, very logical, okay? So when we talk about organizing for a, an organization and for managers, it's all about resources. We've got a goal that we want to achieve. We want to increase our sales. We want to be the best at customer service. We want to improve this, improve that. But we can't just say what we want to do. We have to actually decide then how are we going to take what we have, our resources, and organise them in the best possible way, the most efficient, the most effective way, uh, so that we can actually achieve these goals. And what we're really talking about here is making decisions. So, for example, deciding who's going to be in charge of this new project, for example. Uh, how much money are you going to spend on this? How much time? What kind of information do we have? So a manager, we already know, has to be a good planner and a very good organiser. And we're only halfway there. So moving on, leading. Something that is often talked about with managers. Many times in a good way, many times in a bad way. So let's have a look at what leading actually is in terms of management. So for us, we can say that leading is all about motivating employees. We are trying to give them energy, for example. So what we want to do, this word motivating, for example, is very, very important. We are trying to direct them somewhere. You can see this picture here, okay? This manager is obviously trying to direct their staff towards a goal. And it's the goal of the organization. And if we can direct our staff, we can even help them achieve their own goals. Uh, the other thing that I should mention here is, as you can see, every function links back to the goals, which is why we have planning first. We create the goals, we organize everything, our resources to achieve those goals. We make sure that we look after our people to help them achieve the goals, okay? And one way that we can do that, there are many ways, there are hundreds of ways that we can lead people. But just a few little examples, communicating the goals clearly to people, giving rewards to staff uh, when they need it, building a relationship with employees. So this could be a good relationship or a bad relationship. And of course, as managers, we wanna build the best working relationship we can. Moving on. Controlling. Okay, so I should mention, um, I'll take a little break actually. As you can see on the screen, 
uh, you can see that I'm actually making notes there and you can also see that other people possibly could make notes there as well. So that's something that teachers can use with students sometimes to work on assignments or mind maps, for example, um, to make diagrams, suggestions on the whiteboard. So we can all share the screen and then even save it for later. So that's a nice, simple way that you can actually work together on, uh, on the slides to try and enhance the information that's there. But anyway, getting back to the fourth function, because we are gonna have a, a little basic quiz at the end. Controlling. Controlling says, okay, we've got our goals. We roughly know how we're gonna organize ourselves, how we're gonna use our resources, our time, money. Uh, we've made sure that we're communicating it to people, we're giving them rewards, we're trying to help them reach the goal. Now we have to see whether we've actually achieved the goal. And all it is, is simply looking at, are we actually doing what we said we were going to do when we planned our goals? And if for some reason we don't reach these goals, then managers simply have to take corrective action. That's their job. Their job is to fix things, to get us back on track. Now, in the classroom, we'd go into way more detail for each topic. In fact, all of management covers these four areas uh, in a lot more detail. But generally speaking, what we mean here, for example, is trying to measure how are we doing? We wanted to increase sales by 40% by the end of the week. Are we on track for that? No, we've got to change something. We wanted to get a, uh, get a high rating from our customers, nine out of 10 or above. And we're doing that, fantastic. Next time we might go for 10 out of 10. So guys, that's a basic understanding of how we might go through a little bit of a topic. So of course, it's always necessary to run through an actual example of what we need here. And before I run through that example, and I'm sure that you have examples in your head already, uh, but just want to remind everyone that the acronym that we use is PULK. So remember, planning always comes first, and then we have organizing, leading, controlling, because everything flows from the goals. Everything comes from our planning. So that should also tell us that if our planning isn't good, then no matter what we do with the other steps, it's always going to be a problem. Okay, so just keep these things in mind. Let's move on. So the first example uh, that I want to look at then would obviously be for planning. And we might have a goal in our business, for example, to, pardon me, uh, achieve a 50% increase in global sales between now and 2021. As we know, uh, because of COVID-19 at the moment, many businesses in the world are experiencing trouble here. They have to be planning for the future, for things that they never saw thought that would happen. So this would be a pretty realistic uh, idea of what we might do. We might try and get a 50% increase, but then again, we might be dreaming. Again, we would have to think about how realistic is our goal. So in order to do that, again, there are thousands of things we could do, but we could increase the budget of our advertising department. We could try and put way more money into advertising, which means we take resources from somewhere else. We could create a global online sales team, okay, a special project. When we're leading our staff, apart from communicating to them, we might have to offer them a reward. If we want to have a goal that's going to uh, increase our sales in new countries, new markets, we might have to offer them 5% commission for every sale they do. They get an extra 5%. And then another simple example, uh, when we're measuring how we're doing as an organization, we're not going to wait till June 2021. That would be way too late. If something's going wrong, we can't fix it then. So obviously, we're going to track things online. We're going to have computer systems, etc., that will tell us how we're going. And guys, that is controlling. So an example might be that if some countries aren't doing well, we will take our best salespeople from other departments, or other countries, and we will push them into that area, for example. Now, I'll move on because we're not here to really learn too much about management, but we are here to look at how you might uh, use, how you might be taught this information in a class. So one really important thing to think about guys is real life. 
So one of the things that I love about teaching at Monash College, uh, especially in management and law in my areas, is that we can connect it to real life and that's really important. So I would say that that's actually a really important part of what we do when we're teaching you through Zoom. We're trying to help you make those links to real life. So in our example, managers use Polk to help the organization achieve its objectives with the help of employees and other uh, resources. So a good way to understand this would be to think about how you use Polk in your day-to-day -day life. We all plan, we all organize, we might not lead other people all the time, but we motivate ourselves. We have to think about how we do that and how we control. So to help us do that, uh, an example of what we might do in the classroom would be to conduct an activity. As you can see here, guys, it's a group activity. Okay, so we have a group activity here. Um, again, I don't want you to worry too much about what it's asking you to do, but just to help you uh, have a quick understanding, we're just asking the students here to complete a pulp worksheet where we've given them the goal and we're simply asking them to try and tell us how can we organize things? What would we have to do to lead ourselves, to motivate ourselves? How would we control, okay? Um, this would be done as a team. And to give you an example of how that would work, pardon me, how that would work in Zoom, uh, what we would do in the regular classroom is that we would actually break you off into little groups of four people. So Zoom actually allows us to put you into a room together where you can switch your cameras and microphones on and you can speak to three other people in your group. You can see each other, you can share your screens so you can actually share your work in real time. Okay, and that's really, really helpful. Uh, in case you're wondering, and I would be thinking this as a student, well, you know, does that mean that we just left in the rooms on our own? No, not at all. Uh, you can put your hand up if you need help and your teacher will get a notification on their screen and they will know that group four needs me. I will come in and see you. Apart from that, usually we would come around anyway just to check, hey guys, how are you doing? Do you need any help? Now, apart from working together in the actual room, uh, one example of what we can do is of course to use something like Google Docs. I'm just gonna show you this quickly. Some of you I'm sure have used this before, uh, but in terms of what I'm talking about, here is the pulp worksheet. And you can see that I've put in some information for students. Let's just pretend that all the writing here in this table is uh, student work. So students have put in these answers. So let's start with, well, let's just have a look at number one as an example. And we see that this student um, was thinking about scoring 85 or more in management as their goal. And they're saying, well, to organize myself, at the start of each week, I've got to make a weekly planner that shows how much time I'm going to spend to study for management. And over here, you can see that I've made a comment for the student. Now I can make that comment during class, but of course the good thing about this is that I can also go and make other comments while students are learning or doing other things uh, in other classes, late at night, for example, I can go and check what the students have done and give them more advice, okay? So not only do we have that communication during class, but we also have it outside of class in what we call real time. So I might say something like, yeah, great idea. Uh, maybe you should just be more specific about what study means. And the student can go into that file whenever they want and they see my comments sitting there. Uh, if they're in the file while I'm typing it, they will see me typing it. Uh, when you're working with your group, you will see what each other is typing. So you, it's really good tool, very simple, very basic, but very effective there. I won't say too much more about that because we will talk about it a little bit later on. But the key here to give you a real example from students, uh, for example, we just had exams for some of our students and I'd given them a practice exam uh, or practice exam questions and I asked them to try and work on it together just in terms of normal ideas of what they talk about. And they were able to give each other advice and then I was able afterwards to come in and have a look at the advice that they were giving each other. Not only does that help me to uh, make sure that that advice is good and you know, that we're on track, 
but it also helps me in the next class to know what it is that students are struggling with. So that's how we use that as teachers. Now, I uh, am conscious that we, we won't have a lot of time, so I might move on from there, but that's just a little uh, sample of what we might do. And what we might finish up with is just an example of a quiz or some kind of uh, tool that's gonna help us to actually test whether we understand things. Uh, there are many quizzes and different uh, programs that many Monash College teachers use. Uh, for today, I'm just gonna show you uh, a quick Kahoot based on what we learned today. Okay, can I ask everyone, if you have a mobile phone, a mobile device, uh, can you please have it ready? I'm gonna give you a website in a second with a pin number and you'll be able to log in and we'll be able to do a quiz together. Um, if you're watching this on your laptop, uh, I wouldn't use the laptop to log in because it'll make it very hard. Uh, it's not, not a problem. All you need to do, if you can't get in for some reason today, just have a look and see what the process is like, okay, as to what you'd normally do in class. So, Okay, so very shortly you'll see the website. So can you, sorry about the music. Uh, can you please join www.cahoots.it at the top of the screen? There we go, Expert Dog has already joined. I've given you nicknames as well. Okay, the computer is giving you nicknames here. Again, if you can't join, don't worry too much. We'll get started in a couple of, in uh, a minute or so just to see what it looks like. Cool, so we have a fair few animals, uh, animal nicknames sitting here. Um, let's get started. If you don't make it, again, just follow the screen and try and answer the quizzes in your own mind anyway to have a look at how we might do that. So. You'll have a question flash up and you'll have four colors. You need to pick the color for the answer that you think is correct. So what name do we give to the four functions, guys? Very easy one to start off with. One second. Okay, so most of us got that correct. Polk, um, a few of us got it a little bit backwards, that's fine. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. But obviously, uh, before I do, as a teacher, this might seem really simple. Yeah, I got it right, yeah, I got it wrong. But as a teacher, what I'm doing is also looking at how many numbers are getting it totally wrong, how many are confusing one little part of it. All of that helps me to be able to teach you in the next class or in the next section. So let's move on. There is a scoreboard, but for today, we won't worry too much about it. The management something, describe what a manager does. We only spoke about one of these, so it should be pretty easy. Which one? Roles, skills, functions, or responsibilities? Three seconds. Okay, ooh, interesting. All right, so functions is the correct answer based on today's, uh, today's little presentation, but some of you might also know that roles and skills are also part of management theory, okay? But you get the idea. There's just a few more questions, guys. This one, you can select more than one. Communicating goals to employees is part of which function or functions? Tough question. Okay, I would say leading and planning, definitely, but this is where in the classroom we might have a discussion about this, okay? A student could, for example, say, hang on, but Harry, if we're organizing things and we don't communicate our goals, how are we gonna know how to organize things, okay? 
So again, this is an example of where we might use that for uh, further learning. 50-50 guys, true or false? A manager who's good at planning does not need to be an effective leader. I'm hoping for 100% here. True or false? Okay, so you definitely have to be a good leader. We have to do all of those functions. And finally, guys, measuring how many online sales our company has made in the last week is part of which function? Mainly. Let's see if you were paying attention. Okay, controlling, the correct answer, good. All right, uh, my apologies guys, um, just pick anything for this, okay? I just wanted to show you quickly, this is the last thing. Uh, it says which two management functions will you uh, analyze in your assignment? So this is the kind of thing that I would ask my students. So again, I can plan my next lesson according to what my students need. So we're just gonna skip that one just because of time. Well, there we go. Good. Okay, so that's a very brief example of uh, how we might use Zoom in the classroom and how we might make sure that we get some feedback as we're going along, okay? Uh, now, what I'd like to do, we're going to hear now from a student um, who's going to talk about her experience completing a group assignment while studying in the virtual classroom. Okay, group assignments are part of your assessment while you're studying at Monash College. They're an important part of your assessment along with individual work. And in the virtual classroom, you will have the capabilities to still complete your assignments in groups as well as individually. So I'm gonna pass you on to Luz now, who's gonna share that experience with you. Thank you, Luz. Thank you, Harry. Hi guys, my name is Luz. I am from Peru, South America, and I'm currently studying my Diploma of Engineering at Monash College. So as Harry mentioned, I wanted to share with you my experience studying in a virtual classroom, as well as how I was able to complete a group assignment as part of my assessment. Uh, Harry, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So I recently completed my mobile apps group assignment in a virtual classroom. Uh, there were four people in my group, including myself. And it was basically just uh, using JavaScript as well as HTML code in order to create and develop an app. And after that, a presentation was, was had to be made in order to sell the app that we created. So to complete this group assignment while studying online, we met every single, uh, three times a week via Zoom or via Google Hangouts. And in those meetings, we, also, before those meetings, sorry, we also uh, share our contact details in order to create a WhatsApp group in order to be to have more of like an informal communication to organize what, uh, what time are we going to meet in which day and so on. So in these meetings, we work out who would complete what part of the assignment. We used to discuss new changes of the code and also some problems that we had throughout the process. Uh, after the development of the app, we submitted it through Moodle, which is our learning management system. And one benefit that we had is that our teachers were available every single time of the day. Uh, they were able to help us online. We also have health sessions two times a week. And so we basically weren't lost at all because the teachers were always there for us. Can we go to the other slide? Thank you. So here is... Uh, an example of what our assignment looked like. So there are many tools in the virtual classroom that allow us to collaborate and work together as a team. Um, so here's an example of, the, of one of the parts of the code that we created. You do not have to understand this. Uh, so as mentioned, we use Zoom and Hangouts in order to produce this code together. However, at the time of sharing the code, we use another program called Git Kraken which is a program that allows us to share our code to, with our teammates in a, more, in a more efficient way and also have previous version of the code just in case some, something goes wrong with it. 
Uh, can we go to the other slide? Uh, besides having uh, the code to write, we also had to do documentations, written documentations. And for this one, we use Google Docs. I think most of you must be familiarized with it. So we have uh, Google Docs, and in this one, we can actually share the information within your teammates, and you can do it, you can write at the same time. So what we do, what we did is we distributed our, our pods, and we used to do it all together at the same time and help each other when we had um, some trouble. Um, also, Google Docs allow us to have previous versions of the, of the document, which was are really helpful at some time. And basically, I really enjoyed this group assignment because it made, a, it made me more close to my teammates and we became really good friends. And we didn't, as mentioned, like we didn't have to struggle at all because the teachers were always there for us. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Back to you, Harry. Thank you, Luz, for sharing, us, uh, sharing with us your assignment and your experiences. We appreciate that. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed our virtual classroom demonstration, uh, parents and students, and now have a better understanding of how studying online might work at Monash College. Uh, remember that this is a small taste of what it is that actually happens. Now, our commitment is to support you to achieve your best, regardless of whether you're uh, studying online or in a face-to-face -face capacity. So you could say that that's our goal, okay? So while you're studying online from your home country, you will still have access to all the support services available at Monash College to help you along the way. Um, just pardon me a moment. Okay, so you can see the list on the screen here for you. Um, one of the things that I love about Monash College is that there are so many resources to help students and to support them not just academically, but even just to enjoy life and socially to, uh, to meet new people, to have new experiences. So we do have a dedicated student engagement and services team. They organise a range of clubs and societies for you to join, uh, to learn new skills and meet students from all around the world. I'll just give you a quick example. Uh, last trimester and the trimester before, we were playing football or soccer, as we call it in Australia, with many students. Um, other teachers were also helping out in uh, music clubs, okay? Uh, many, many clubs for you to join there. We also have learning and career advisors. Now, they're there for you to be able to make contact with to make sure that you're on the right path at Monash University. And I can tell you from experience that as teachers, we work very closely with, uh, with our learning and careers advisors to make sure that we help you both in and out of the classroom. So to be a successful student, you also need to feel supported, obviously, in all areas of your life. That's why your health and well-being is a priority at Monash College. So if you do have any problems or concerns while you're a student, our counsellors offer free uh, confidential counselling, and that's very important, to help you with your personal, academic and emotional challenges if you need it. And of course, in my opinion, the teachers are wonderful, but I'll let you decide that for yourself. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your time. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you at Monash College in the future as part of your education. Thank you very much, everyone.